Yeah, my 2012 Dakar experience was, was really good. Um, I had a really great time. Um, it was exciting. Uh, we got to ride on the edge and, and just do things that you would never even think that uh, you would do in a car. Well, riding a bike in Dakar is, uh, it feels a little more natural to me uh, just because I'm a dirt bike rider, racer. And when I learned to navigate on a bike, you know, you're, you have the thought process going through your brain of what you interpret that picture on that road book to look like when you get there. When you get to that spot where it's a left Y with a ditch and you interpret it one way, but when you have to communicate what your brain is telling you it looks like to the driver, and then he has to visualize what that note looks like and what that road in the desert is going to look like at that point. It, that's the difference between the two. One, you're mentally thinking it and then you're going to act upon it yourself. Um, with, as a co-driver navigator, you have to think that, but then you have to communicate it to the driver. You know, I, I don't know how eager I am to get behind the wheel. I actually really enjoyed being the co-driver navigator. Um, because it's a it's a challenge and I think it takes a special a special skill or, or technique um, or a special gift of, of to be in that seat and to be able to relay the information to the driver and I don't think it's definitely not for everyone just like driving is not for everyone I don't think the navigation part is for everyone I mean you have to really stay on top of it because anytime you t you take a little breather, that next note's coming up and it's easy to make a mistake. I mean, it's like that. When you're going 100 miles an hour and a ditch is coming up and you don't relay that to your driver, you know, things happen quick. Uh, the big difference has been between being a co-driver in Baja versus being a co-driver navigator in the Dakar is that in the rallies you have a road book. And so you actually have a physical page road book that you study and we always, I always mark them up with, you know, highlight them and make sure I know what the direction is saying and even write down exactly what I'm going to tell the driver when we get to that note. Um, you're also using uh, a GPS odometer and a GPS, but it's not the same as using a GPS in Baja. In GPS in Baja, you know the route. You're allowed to pre-run that route. You get a download track log. In Dakar, you don't get a track log. There is no track log. You don't know where the waypoints are. You have to be able to follow a compass heading, follow the road book, follow a compass heading, and then as you approach those waypoints within, usually within under a, a kilometer, then the GPS will tell you how close that GPS or that waypoint is. No, I think it took probably three stages, and it took me um, actually making a mistake or error in navigation to be able to understand the equipment, the electronic equipment I had to use, um, because I, I would follow it and do the basics on it, but until I actually made an error with it, then it caused me to go deeper and learn more about the equipment. You know, I... I there was a lot of pressure I, I felt. Um, I don't think Rob really didn't put pressure. I didn't feel pressure from him, but I felt, felt myself putting more pressure on myself because th there's a big effort there, you know, and there's a lot on the line. There's, uh, we're going fast, you know, our lives are, are at stake um, as well as the race. And so, and I knew I, I knew I was a rookie. I mean, I'd never co-drove in a car, been able to relay my thoughts of navigation to somebody and and you know I was I was a little concerned about going into our first dune stage as at first you know first car and stuff but you know as I as I learned the equipment and I developed my own process of how to navigate um, I got more comfortable with it and once you kind of click and you get it then you give build confidence and you have to build confidence based on you know when you do something and you do it right then you're like okay this is how it works i got it you know and so you start clicking and you're never going to be perfect because even the best guys like peter hansel's guys or the guys that 
we're going against that have navigated for a long time, even they make mistakes, you know? And so I had to kind of put that in my mind as well and say, hey, everybody's going to make mistakes. Um, I, you know, that was the one thing I, I wanted to do is study hard, do my job well, and make sure that I wasn't hindering the program with my uh, inexperience. Um, you know what? I think the first, the first day, the first stage when we took off, and I'm trying to flip through the road book, and I tell them there's a ditch coming up, and we'd already passed it. You know, and I was going, holy cow, this is going to be a long adventure, because I'd never been in a car, you know, but once with my brother in a class one car that I didn't know what they can do and how to drive those things. And, you know, and then he tells me, oh, I'm not pushing it. <laughs> I think the U.S. promoters could you could learn a lot of professionalism from um, the size of the event of Dakar. Um, it's so big. There's so many logistics um, that they have to have a big group. You know, the U.S. promoters. It's usually like one or two people that run those things. You know, the ASO is a big organization, and they delegate well. It seems like. And they have a professional, you know, program going, um, and I think that our promoters are just their small American cowboy style promoters, they're, that do what they feel is right. But I think there's so much more if you're if you allow yourself a little faith and, and guidance and delegating. You know, once we started putting pressure on and we got in a position that went, you know what, we could be leading this thing, that's when the organization started, you know, really coming down on, on our team. And, uh, you know, I think Rob proved that, you know, their inflation system didn't have any effect on how we were going to race. You know, we obviously, a few days later, he completely unplugged the thing and we raced it and, and we still won. So... The, if there was any performance gain from the system, which I don't think there was, you know, it was all, all a bunch of monkey business. You know, we, the only reason we didn't win that rally was my inexperience and a bad decision on a mechanical. I think the, the Kike stage victory was the best. It was our first one. Um, exciting, dramatic finish to that stage coming over that hill and going down that dune, that was just absolutely phenomenal. And, you know, that, that had to be the pinnacle. I mean, I have actually could say I've contributed to winning this stage at Dakar. No, I, I felt like, uh, you know, I, I know Robbie's character, and I've, you know, been spending a long time in the car with him. I, I think I know him now. And, and I knew what I was taking on when I made an agreement with Robbie, you know. Um, you know, he's, he's flamboyant and he's exciting and, and he's, a, he's a definitely a, a, a racer, you know. Did you know him before? Um, I only knew Rob just from racing. I mean, we bumped into each other. My brother worked for him before. Um, we've spent, you know, we've done photo shoots for other companies together before and, and whatnot. And, you know, we always knew each other and crossed paths all the time, but we've never, like, got to spend two weeks in a car together. But now you, you know him, right? Yeah, no, I feel like I know Robbie pretty well, and, and uh, I feel like he has a mutual respect for me and, and my character and my, um, you know, my accomplishments. And, and so I, I think we had a, a really great time, and, and uh, we, we connected pretty well, actually. Well, Rob, I think more than anybody in, in that Dakar rally had probably the most at stake. You know, he puts his whole heart and a lot of hard work into being, coming to Dakar, going to Dakar. He has the, like the passion of Dakar because, I mean, that, that guy's pretty much self-built himself, you know, and, and he has a real dynamic and charismatic, you know, um, character. And some people don't like it and some people love it, but... All in all, you know, those were both his. Those are both his cars, and so he had a lot of pride in that. He actually prepped uh, Nazar's car with a couple of other his got of his guys, and so Rob wanted to see those two cars go to the front of the pack. Whether it was, 
he told me multiple times, he goes, you know, if Nazar wins, it's great, I win, you know. If, if we win, that's great, I win. Were you feeling any of the love, or how much of it were you feeling from the states, is that all the internet watchers and all the race fans that are watching the coverage, is that, did you feel any of that? Did you feel that, oh my gosh, I'm back home, America's really taking this seriously? Yeah, I did because uh, when I was in touch with, with uh, yourself a little bit and, and uh, Faye, my wife, said that there's a lot of, you know, the USA was backing us and, and our whole industry was, you know, behind Robbie and I and, and our effort and stuff. And, you know, we were like America's only hope at that point. And uh, um, so it felt good. You know, it felt really, you felt like really strong American when you have that type of backing. For sure, Robbie is the favorite down there. I mean, there, as soon as that orange car comes around the corner, it's Robbie, 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 picture, one picture, one picture. And, you know, in some respect, I feel bad for him because I know what that's like in Baja and you've just got other things on your mind and you're just being drugged down and you want to be cordial. And he did a really fantastic job of, of really spending more than enough time with the locals of taking pictures and stuff when he was fully focused on his racing effort and the race and everything that was going on and a missing truck and you know um, you know the whole tech ordeal and you know he got pulled apart really really hard but but for sure every country went in even Peru which is a new country for the rally he was still the favorite by far we went over the big white sand dunes and it was it was amazing I mean uh, Really, the dunes, and, and especially in Peru, were um, really, really difficult. I mean, there's like no rhythm in some of these things, and we fell victim. You know, one day we fell victim and went straight into a hole and had to dig ourselves out and, you know, cost us a lot of time. And But I think everybody did. Yeah. I'd work with Rob again, no problem. I think we got a good understanding of each other and, and how we work. and. Um, you know, I had a fantastic time and I'd, I'd love to do it again. I think uh, my number one best memory, I mean, the most exciting was obviously Kike Dune coming down that thing at 136 miles an hour. Whew, that was that was gnarly, but you know, I I really liked the flavor of, of the speed team. Um, it was fun because it was cowboy, it was American, um, the crew was amazing, you know, those guys worked their butts off. They, you know, as soon as we get in, they'd be on the car and they'd work all night, whatever it took. And I mean, and, and that, you know, and half the crew was like NASCAR guys, you know, and and they have, it, it, it was just fun because it was such a grassroots style team that it made me think of how our team is and it's it just a bunch of good guys and that that's what the atmosphere was awesome. Um, what's it like to be the passenger seat with Robbie for two weeks is, um, it's super exciting. He's a phenomenal driver. Um, I learned to get comfortable with his driving. Uh, like after day one, I kinda got it used to it and then at that point, then I could just do my job rather than worry about if he's gonna crash a truck or how do you, how he negotiates that. But, so I got real comfortable with him, but just being, I think, in the car with him the whole time was, it was educational and it was just to see how he operates and how he runs his show and, and uh, I learned a lot from the whole experience. Definitely I, I, I learned a lot and observing, you know, not only how Rob operates or how the team was or how I navigate, but just in general, you learn a lot about people down there and, and, and systems. And so the more you learn, you know, the better off you are in your own environment. And so it, it just made me more mature in some aspects of decision making and how to deal with certain situations. Well, in another 30 days, we're going to ask you how you feel about 2013. But, but for now, we have nothing to say, but, that, but thank you and congratulations. Yeah, thank you very much.